going to go to the question. Okay. Uh, the saying is we're doing a Barata trading. Balance is extracted from the books of Barata trading for the year ended 31st March 2016. You remember when your year ended here? When did when is it going to start? Just want to remind you that as well. That's in April. I'm gonna start in April, the first of April. That's correct. And the previous year, which is 2015, correct? Yes. Okay. So here they give us uh, all these things, all these items. We have capital, we have vehicles, we have furniture, we have accumulated depreciation on vehicle, we have accumulated depreciation, furniture, we have data allowances. The data allowances, ne? The other term for this one is, uh, uh, um, it's sales returns. The other term for data allowances is sales returns. When you see sales returns, you must know that it's the same as data allowances. In case there is some way where you have to utilize data allowances, you can utilize data returns. I mean sales returns, because sales returns is the synonym of data allowances, okay? And then we have interest on overdraft, we have cost of sales, we have account receivable. Account receivable is the same as debtors. Account receivable is the same as debtors. And then we have account payable. Account payable is the same as creditors. Right, and then uh, we move with allowance for credit losses. Uh, it's bad debt, this one. Bad debts. Or they can, they can sometimes call it provision for credit losses. So it's allowance, or they can call it provision. Provision for credit losses or bad debts, right? And then with revenue, revenue is the same as sales. Where you have to say sales, you can use revenue, sales. Sales is the same as revenue. Okay. And then this one has to be provision for credit losses or provision for bad debt, right? Allowance for or provision for credit losses or bad debt. Here, these are bad debts. Debts. So here is allowance or provision for credit losses, or it can be allowance for bad debts or, or provision for bad debts. So you can decide which one you prefer or which one you understand better. And then uh, interest received, sharp selling expenses, bank favorable drawings, stationary, rent received, well, long term loan salaries. Mm, so we go to additional information. They say interest paid to the amount to the amount of one hundred and fifty rent was erroneously posted to interest account. The error must be corrected. The error must be corrected. Okay. They're saying interest paid were recorded in the interest received. So we need to correct that error. And then uh, and this, and transaction number two, credit losses, credit loss still to be written off. It means it still need to be recorded. Allowance for credit losses must must be increased to must be increased to two thousand five hundred and then stationary on hand on the thirty first of march twenty sixteen or the end of the year is three hundred right with this one remember in the previous session i said especially that side we didn't have stationary but we had we had packing material so we are going to apply this one the same i said stationary becomes an expense when it is utilized. So it means from the total number of stationary that we had, we have utilized 
We have utilized one saver stationary and then the remaining stationary is 300 at the end of the year. So the ones that was utilized between the one, the total stationary that is in the trial balance and the 300 at the end, that will be our expenditure of stationary. Provision for provide depreciation for vehicle at 10% per annum using the straight line method and furniture at 20% per annum using the diminishing balance method. Take into account that new vehicle with a cost price of 5,000 was purchased and recorded on the 1st of March 2016. Okay, was recorded, All right? And then, um, The selling expenses were understated by 225. Means we need to fix that as well. Carriage out was of 2000 was not recorded. And then they say 1650 for fuel was not recorded. Right? So, and then you are required to prepare the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income for the year ended 31st March 2016. So now we are done with this, right? We just have to go and record now. Let's go to the answer sheet. Sales. Remember, I said our sales is, is the same as revenue. So remember again that in order for us to get the net sales that we have to record here is going to be our revenue or our sales of. Where is our revenue there? Of 149,675 minus the debtors allowances or sales returns. Am I clear? So you will come here, open brackets there, and say sales that is given in the trial balance of 149,675 minus the sales returns or data allowances, which is 51775. Are you with me? How much do you get then? How much do you get? How much do you get? Sales is equal to uh, gross sales of 149.675 minus 51775. How much are you getting? 97900. 97900. That's correct. 97900. I hope uh, Jackie is with us as well. 97900. And then we have to minus. Our cost of sales. Our cost of sales, I think, is given. I'll say our cost of sales is given there. How much is it? Let's go to our question. Our cost of sales is given there. Is five five one seven seven five right? Five one seven seven five. So we can go to our answer sheet and say five one seven seven five. Are you with me? Are we all together? Are we all together? Yes. Okay, and then therefore remember the statement the, 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 the format says sales minus cost of sales, you'll get your gross profit. So how much your gross profit? How much your gross profit? You have to say nine seven nine hundred of sales minus fifty one seven seven five. Of cost of sales, you'll get your gross, you'll get your gross profit. So sales four minus six. cost of sales is cost to gross profit. How much? Four six one two four five. Six, one two, one, two five. five. That's correct. And then now, already I've done this for you guys, but you know you need to know this uh, income is uh, expense. So we're going to do our. <clears throat> we're going to check our our additional information. We have rent received. Hope you've seen that. 
So we just have to check if in there do we have any do we have any um do we have any do we have any current receipt on the additional information? We do not have here. Do not see that. So rent received is going to be we're going to cut and paste the way it is. Rent received is going to be one one two five. One one two five. One one. Are you getting are you can you see that? Yes. Just want to confirm if I'm right. Okay. And then with with interest received, they said something. So it means we need to do our calculations in brackets there. They said something. So let's go to our additional information. They are saying interest paid to their amount of 150 was asleep posted to interest received account. The error must be corrected. So to correct the error, since they're saying they've taken this 150 and added it into the into the interest received account, we're going to minus that 150, right? So we're just gonna go there, open brackets, and check how much is our interest there. Check your question. Your interest received is 2,700. Then we have to minus 150 because they added it by error. There was an error that was created. So how much is your actual interest received? How much is the correct interest received after correcting that error? After correcting that error, how much is your interest received? 2.515. Like this? Yes. 2550. That's fine. That's correct. And then <clears throat> we'll have to add the, 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 the two. Then they're going to give us other incomes. Then we'll have to add the two. They'll give us other incomes. We'll have to add the two. They'll give us other incomes. Let's add the two. They'll give us other incomes. Remember this is the gross profit then. Then you must add this one. This two. You must add one one two five plus two five five zero. Then we'll get three that. six seven five. Yeah, getting three seven. Three six seven five. Or three six seven five. Yes. Three six seven five. Yeah, that is our that is our other incomes ne? that is our other incomes and then we have to add the two we have to say gross gross profit plus other incomes it will give us operating income i don't know if you guys have followed that method that i've given you before but it's the same system it's the same system so you just have to say four six one two five plus three six seven five you'll get to operating income you have to say gross profit plus other incomes you'll get your operating income are you all winning? Four nine eight You're getting four nine eight hundred. Four nine eight hundred. Okay. Four nine eight hundred. Are you all getting that? Yes. Forty nine eight hundred. Yes. Okay. And then let's go to our our expenses, our expenses was to be maybe we say operating expenses, operating expenses, and then when we come here, um, we'll have to check our credit losses your credit losses you have to go to transactions or additional information so 
Your additional information says credit loss still, still to be written off. It means it still need to be recorded. So in order for us to record this, we have to say the credit losses that is still, that is already there of 4150 plus the 700. Am I clear? So you're going to open brackets there, right? And say, um, for oh, 150 plus the 700 that was not yet recorded or that was not yet accounted for. Therefore, how much is your credit loss is there? 4850. It's 4850. Please never, never, never in your life fail something like this because it's an, it's an easy thing. It's an easy thing. Maybe the one that we're going to do is going to be a difficult one, but this one, especially the statement of profit or loss for, for sole trader or sole proprietor. It's, 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 it's easy. And then we have what we call allowance for credit losses adjustments or adjusted. Where, where, like, where, if you remember in the previous session, it was saying decrease, right? Now it says increase in the, let's see, it says increase. If you check, it says you have to increase two. That means we've put less money instead of more. So if you check there, they are saying our allowance for credit losses is 1,250. And then the additional information gives us that the correct one is actually 2,500. It means we've put less money instead of more. So since we have to increase more money, it means it means we have to take the difference and add there, right? We have to take the difference and add there. So. In order for us to get the correct in, uh, amount that we must increase, we have to say uh, this 2,500 minus, minus the actual one that is in the additional information. So just go to our answer sheet and say, open brackets there, 2,500 minus, one, two, one. It's one, how much? Let's take the question there. It's one, one, two, fifty. One, two, fifty. One, two, fifty. And then how much do you get? Eh? One, two, fifty. Two, 1,500 minus 1,250, you'll get how much? 1,250 as well. Yeah, this is the increase that we must make. In, 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 on the other side, remember it was saying decrease. So when we have to decrease, it means we put more money instead of, of less. Then we have to reverse the difference in back to the business. But in this case, we have put less money. So we have to add more. That's why now it's coming to expense. If you remember in the previous session, where they say we have to decrease our allowance for credit losses. The allowance for credit losses adjustments, it was an income. This time it would be an expense. So it depends. It can be an income or an expense. If you have to decrease, it's an income. If you have to increase, it's an expense. I don't know if it makes sense. And then um, um, we have stationary deficit here. Uh, you know, deficit means the other stationery maybe was stolen or disappeared or something like that. Okay. Because <clears throat> at the beginning of the year, but it doesn't have to be stationary deficit if it's fixed. I think the stationery was consumed. Ne? If they are two like this, you just have to say stationery is an expense. And then we have a total amount of 1,200 of stationery plus. A, I mean, minus, minus 300 that was remaining at the end. 
minus the stationary that was remaining at the end, which is 300. Then you'll get the stationary that was consumed, which will be your expense. Right? As I said, stationary becomes an expense when it is utilized. So that means your stationary that was utilized that qualifies to be an expense is 900. Okay? And then with interest, with interest expense, is the, these are interest paid, ne? either they call them interest expense or interest paid. They remember they said that by error we have taken 150 to interest received and we have corrected that again. So we have to correct this side as well. So we are going to say check there in our, in our question, how much is our interest paid or interest expenses? How much are interest expenses of which is uh, I see we have overdraft. It's an interest expense as well. And what else do we have? We only have that one eh? of overdraft. So of seven five two five. Eh? So we're gonna go with this side and open bracket and say seven five two five plus the one fifty that was taken into the interest received by error. So 150. Then how much are you getting there? How much are you getting there? How much are you getting? Are you still there, guys? Seven, six. Uh, 75. Yes, you're getting seven? 670. Yeah, 7675. 7675. 7675. That's correct. And then salaries. Do you have any additional information about salaries? Let's go there and check. Let's go into our question there and check. Let's go to our question and check. Do we have? Additional no. information about salaries. No. If not, then we're gonna copy this one and paste off for the forty-three thousand seven seven five. Forty-three seven seven five. Okay. And then we have uh, our depreciation, right? Our depreciation. If you check the um. We're going to have to calculate depreciation on, 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 on vehicle. And then we also have to calculate a depreciation on furniture, right? So if you check the, let's check on vehicle. Depreciation on vehicle. Is mute. Depreciation on vehicle. It's, um, let's go to the question. Transaction number five or additional information number five. That's in provide depreciation for, for vehicle at 10% per annum using the straight line method. And then they say, take into account that new vehicle with a cost price of 5,000 was purchased and recorded on one March. Uh, 2016. So, in order for us to calculate this depreciation, remember they are saying it's recorded, it means it's part of the vehicles that are already here. So, we have to separate these vehicles. Do I make sense? We have to separate them. Okay. Do I make sense? We have to calculate depreciation for each vehicle individually. So that's what I'm trying to say. I don't know if I make sense. Do I make sense? And then let me just do it so that you can see what I'm trying to say. Remember, they're saying it's already recorded, it means in the total vehicle of 25,000, we have 25,000 cost price of vehicles. Right? 25,000 cost price of vehicles. 
right? So in this case, uh, we, are, we will have to calculate the old vehicle that has been there. Ne? Intersection for the old vehicle. So the old vehicle is going to be 25,000, the total amount of vehicles minus the new vehicle of 5,000. Then the old vehicles is equal to the cost price of old vehicles goes to 20,000, right? And then we'll have to say this 20,000 multiply by. Remember, we're using the straight line method, ne? Calculate okay, depreciation vehicle, we're using the straight line method. So the straight line method, you were saying? <coughs> Sorry, it's 10, 10 per Okay, so you just want to start with the formula, always start with there so that you don't forget. So the straight line method is cost price multiplied by the percentage you're given. Multiply by the percentage you are provided for. Multiply by a number of months, which is N, divided by 12. You'll get your depreciation. Right, so you'll come here and follow this formula. Your cost price is 20,000 multiplied by the percentage given you said is 10 divided by 100. Multiply by, um, <clears throat> multiply by, because it's the old uh, vehicle and it has been there for the whole year, it's going to be multiplied by 12, divided by 12, it was there for the whole year. And then how much do you get there? I get 2,000. I don't know how much you get. I'm getting 2,000. Then we'll come in here and say open brackets. Open brackets. Sorry, dollar, you're getting how much? Oh. 2,000. How much are you getting? Remember, I still we have calculated the old one first. Oh, so I'm getting 2,000. 20,000. Yes, yes, and then we're going to calculate for the new. The new was there for one month. It was just there from the, the first of March that was purchased until the end, which is one month, because our year ended on the on the on the third year on the 31st of March. So just the, it was there for one month. So it's going to be 5,000, which is the cost price, multiplied by 10%. Multiply by one, divide by twelve. How much are you getting? How much is your depreciation? That is, we are still doing vehicle. Ne? Vehicle. How much is your depreciation? Forty two. Forty two. Yeah, forty two. Then we have to say plus forty two. Plus forty two. And then we have to plow go in plus the one to finish, right? Because the other we are, the other asset that we have that we're supposed to calculate the precession for is furniture. Ne? There we go. So our furniture. Depreciation is calculated at a diminution balance method where you have to say cost price multiplied by uh -uh, cost price minus, minus accumulated, accumulated depreciation. depreciation. Correct, you get your carrying value and then you will multiply by your percentage provided. You will multiply by. Um, <clears throat> number of months you divide by 12 you'll get your depreciation that is how we use our diminishing balance method to calculate depreciation right okay so now <clears throat> let's go let's go and and check let's go and check what is happening with our furniture they gave us the cost price of furniture there, right? 
and then uh, and there is accumulated depreciation there here right so let's calculate our furniture and see because we don't have any additional information about furniture except for the method provided to calculate depreciation so let's go and calculate depreciation there so it's going to be 21 that is the cost price is 21,750 minus 2000 accumulated depreciation right accumulated depreciation right and then we get how much 21,750 minus 2000 accumulated of accumulated depreciation how much is your cutting value 197 Five zero. Repeat that, please. One nine one nine seven five zero. One nine seven seven five zero. Yes. Multiplied by and then multiply from there. You multiply by twenty. Divide by hundred. Multiply by. It was there the whole year, so it's going to be twelve. 12 by 12. How much is your depreciation? How much is your depreciation on furniture? 3950. 3950. We're getting 3950, so we will edit the 3950. So, okay, are you getting that as well? Yes. 3950. Nine five zero. Then that's correct. Then how much is our total depreciation that must be recorded there? Five double nine two. Five double nine two. Five double nine two. I hope everyone is getting that amount. And then let's go to our selling expenses. I think there was a, a there was an additional information about it there. They're saying the selling expenses were under stated or undercast by 225 the mistake might be corrected it means we need to correct that so we'll go we'll come we'll go to our uh, selling price i mean selling expenses i mean to say not selling price selling expenses and take the total amount from the trial balance which is let's see Selling expenses, neutral balance, which is two seven two says two seven is two six is two six seven two five two six seven two five plus two two five that was undercut, right? Okay. Plus, uh, there's, a, there's an additional information about carriage outwards. It's when we sell. When we sell, we carry goods from the business to. Remember, those are expenses that are for sales. So those expenses are for sales. So those are selling expenses in, include maybe for body delivery. When maybe you buy a furniture, they they transport for you. You don't even pay anything. They say it's free delivery. Well, now it costs them, right? So it's going to be part of the sales. This 2000 is going to be part of the selling expenses. Then we'll come this side and say plus 2000. It's the carriage outwards. Okay? And then we can calculate the total. We can calculate the total. It's going to be 26, 725. Plus two eight nine five zero. Plus how much? Two eight nine five zero. Two eight nine five zero. Nine five zero. I hope we're getting the same amount. And then we have fuel, which is the last thing. We have fuel, which is the last thing. Sorry, Dollar, can you repeat the one? Yeah. The carriage outwards. Yes, I didn't understand. Moguti. Carriage outwards, it's like it's like it's like when you buy furniture, or let's say you are owning a furniture store, 
right? Okay. You are Louis, so I so say pay me just to, right? And then the carriage outwards simply says is the cost of the delivery, right? Oh, the transport. Yes. Oh. Remember, most of the furniture stores, they say they deliver for free. But if you, you now you are saying you're delivering for free, you know you're going to pay the driver that is delivering those, those furnitures. You're also going to pay the petrol. You also service the car. So the cost will incur, you understand, for the business, oh, right? It's okay. the same as carriage outwards. It's like we're carrying the goods out of the business to the customer. Oh, okay. So carriage delivered. Mm. Okay. So that's why I'm saying it's the selling expense because when you sell, you also included that delivery cost there. Therefore, that's why I'm saying it's a selling expense because it was incurred when we sell certain furnitures, for example, in the business. Oh, okay. And then it cost the business and it's part of the selling expenses. Are we, are we fine? Yes. Okay. And then can we move to fuel? I don't know if we have additional information about fuel, but we'll see. Let's see. Yes, we have there. They are saying uh, 1,650 fuel was not recorded. So if you check your fuel, there's 39,150. 39,150. So you can come here. Open brackets there. 39, 39,150. Yes, 39,150. 39,150 plus 1,650 that was not recorded. 1,650 that was not recorded. We're recording it now. Then how much is your fuel? How much is your fuel expenditure? How much is your fuel expenditure? Four, four zero eight zero zero. Four zero eight, eight zero, zero. zero zero. That is your fuel, and then we have to add these expenses. After adding them, we'll put the total here. Ne? We have to add all the expenses, and then we'll put the total here in brackets because they are we are going to minus them from our incomes so that we see how much is our profit so we're going to see operating income minus operating expenses we see how much is our profit right so how much is our profit there i mean how much is our operating expenses and then we'll calculate the profit after. How much is our operating expenses? Are you winning? 128,200. Mm, are you sure? <laughs> hey, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's start again. Let's start together. 4850 plus 1250. Plus nine hundred plus seven six seven five plus four three seven seven five plus five nine nine two plus two eight nine fifty plus forty eight hundred. How much? Sure, now you'll get it right. Because even in the exam, when you, you are writing, you must spell out your numbers. One. Four, eight, like the way we're doing now. You spell out, even though you don't have to make noise with anyone, but you do it on your own. And then you, you will get the right answer. You're getting? One, one, four, four. One, three, four. One, four. You're getting one, four. Hey. Uh, you were not calculating with but, me. I was calculating with you, dollar, but home. No, it's less that again. Oh, okay, okay, let me see. Wait. Let's start again. No, we don't need to start again. No, let's um, start again. We'll find the I right thing. That's how we must. Four, one, nine, two. Yeah? one, three. It's one, three. Okay, one, one three, three, four. One, three, four. One, three, four. one, nine, nine, two. one nine, two. That's correct. Yes. That's what I'm getting. So, you see, be careful with the calculate. It will more you, eh? Then if Ish, I, I added a zero by mistake by one of the uh, numbers, so I just okay. 
Yeah. Okay. And then now uh, that means you must always double check on your calculations, okay? In the exam. Yes. Okay. So here, if you can check the income are less than the expenses, it means we have a loss here. So if we have a loss like this, our, our net profit for this is going to be in bracket. Mm, yes. So we're gonna... just going to say 49800 minus 134. 192 it will give you a negative amount then you put it in brackets it's 84392 that's what i'm getting i don't know how much are you getting how much are you getting i'm getting 84392 how much are you getting yeah i got that as well okay that's correct that is at the end of our session